Well, it's moving. And why is this the best? I don't know. It just seemed to, it, it, it was always, uh, it, it's a long throw. And it's later in the afternoon. And the longer the throw, the, the bigger the rainbow. Yeah, there we are. I just know having the full spectrum is, is a nice thing to have. And, and it's so, this red is so intense, you know? It's such a beautiful red. But just getting to the edge of what we can see, that's another thing that fascinates me about this thing is you're seeing this patch of light here. And, and, and you can feel it just disappearing, but you, you sense that it's continuing, that even though you're not seeing it. So it's really nice to get to the edge of your perception of a color and just watch it fade into something that you can't see anymore. But, but scientifically, you know it continues. So it's kind of a, a nice thing. And so at either end of that, it's just great to see it just kind of disappear. This projection of light is so pure that you just cannot reproduce it. It's its own thing. And that's why I really like it. The inspiration or impulse to put in the rainbows in the PFA was uh, really because I had earlier developed a product for lava lamp called Dark Star, which utilizes diffraction grading in a manner that made an aurora type uh, rainbow uh, pattern on the ceiling or on the wall uh, with a lamp that they sold for a while. And uh, in developing that lamp, I got interested in all the diffraction gratings. And uh, so uh, just one day, I'm looking up at that window and I go, oh my goodness. A and B went together and I realized I could start doing some significant uh, large-scale environmental diffraction grading projections. A diffraction grating is really a piece of plastic. I have one right here. And on this piece of plastic, there are thousands and thousands of scratches in several different directions, actually. If you shine light through these scratches, the interference of light around those scratches will actually sort out the light and will create uh, a rainbow on the other side. This diffraction grating actually comes in different kinds of patterns. Uh, in scientific spectrometers or spectroscopes, you only want the spectrum to go off in, in one direction. And so that has just a single set of scratches or lines on it. The camera can't reproduce the colors as well as uh, you see them uh, coming from the sun. The spectrum when it's projected on the exploratorium floor is all the wavelengths in true color. The stuff that Pete is using, he wants a spectrum to go out this way and this way and this way. And so you put several different sets of scratches or lines on the grating. So that's multi-axis grating. We have spectrums above and below and diagonally. If I rotate the grating here, the spectrums rotate and it gets real trippy and you begin to feel like you're back in the 60s. Whether there was a plan to bring the rainbows here, as far as being able to tell whether I could or not, it was up in the air and I just decided I wasn't going to be able to even determine that until we actually moved in here. On face value, it didn't look that promising because the building is set up for natural light as a way to save energy, whereas the old building was just the old building. So the process is first prototype, which is there's a window, and I'm going to cover it with a film of diffraction grating. At first, I mean, it's pr primitive. It's a couple pieces of tape, and the, th the, piece, the piece of grating is, is up there. These guys have a clipped edge. They're at 45 degrees from the, the square ones. That's how I get the weave. Eventually, everything outside will come inside, except for the extra mirrors. I'm going to put in six diagonal mirrors on the outside. Uh, to direct uh, light at high noon to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. 
into the gallery so that there are rainbows there all day. Do you have a title for this exhibit? Yeah, Spectral Meadow. Because it's making a color field. Uh, you know, it's a mix, it's a weave. It's not a single rainbow. It's a kind of a weave of rainbows. So it reminded me of a flowered meadow. So how come you never named it originally? It just was just a, well, it was so diffuse all over everywhere. This is much more coherent. I didn't think I'd be able to get it to do what it's doing now even. So I'm pretty happy with the place now. Why did you uh, think you couldn't get it? Because it wasn't dark enough with enough, a few light openings, you know. It, in fact, but once I control all the skylight, then it's all rainbow and it's all right, more or less. It's a rare thing to find something that is so, uh, so has so little material in it and doesn't cost a whole lot that can affect such a large area. When you can spread light out and it's interesting, then it's, it's really the most amazing, uh, amazingly efficient way to do a big show.